Mankind was born on Earth. It was never meant to always stay here. The potential in our minds urges us to soar to the cosmos. It always has fascinated the deepest imaginations of our cognition. While observing the galaxies in the dark sky with very powerful telescopes, the most creative minds of the human race always had some common questions. What is the origin of the universe? What was present before the Big Bang? Are we alone in the entire universe? The technology was limited, but pursuit continued until the historic day of 25th December 2021, when the largest and most influential space science telescope, James Webb Space Telescope, was launched by NASA. It is a premier observatory with a large infrared telescope with an approximately 6.5 meter primary mirror, orbiting the Sun at Lagrangian Point L2, an imaginary point in the Sun-Earth system, one million miles from the Earth, to find the first galaxies that formed in the early universe and to see the stars forming planetary bodies. On the other hand, it will also help in more critically analyzing the multiverse theory and the presence of dark matter. We all are taking J2ST as the successor of the Hubble Space Telescope, and it is set to complement the discoveries of the Hubble Space Telescope with longer wavelength coverage and better determination of Hubble constant. One amazing feature of J2ST is that it will explore the universe as seen in the infrared band range, the light human naked eye cannot see. In the infrared region, we would be able to see the otherwise unseen dust clouds, but what can be the real reason to launch such a colossal telescope into space? And can it really prove the presence of dark matter and the theory of multiverse? The answer lies in the correct measurement of the Hubble constant. We all know that universe is ever expanding at high speed rates. For example, consider a balloon. Draw some dots on it. Somewhere in those balloons also lies our Milky Way galaxy. Now when you fill the air in the balloon, the galaxy will move far from each other. In a similar way, the universe is also expanding, but the point is that when we try to find the rate of these expansions, we find ourselves in a puzzle. Different methods lead to different rates of this expansion. Well, do not worry about the term we are here to explain, but before that, if you are still here in this video, you have a great thirst for science and knowledge. So why not subscribe and press the bell icon of the channel? Our team of great researchers never disappoints. When the big bag happened, after some time, an enormous amount of superheating of all the matter in the universe released large volumes of rays in the form of photons. As more time passed and the universe expanded further, these radiations got more and more redshifted. Cosmic microwave background contains the record of this redshifting of radiation. In today's world, we know that CMB might not be a uniform structure to read. However, it surely contains the hotter and colder patches that record the clumpiness of energy and matter in the beginning stages of the universe. With the application of energy and mass present in the universe along with the basic principles of physics, cosmologists can tell the expansion rates of the universe. They repeated the procedures hundreds of thousands of times to match the conditions and clumpiness of the matter and time scale. By doing so, with the courtesy of a meticulous process, cosmologists have recorded the value of the Hubble constant, which is only 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. The second method is measuring the expansion of light in the universe with the help of dying stars. These are the stars very soon to die. Astronomers are being able to measure the maximum brightness of these red giants by studying nearby similar stars at known distances. Friedman used this exact method of finding maximum brightness to calculate the distances of faraway galaxies. Friedman's value of the Hubble constant was 69.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec. The bright cepheid stars also contribute to the measurement of the Hubble constant. The values taken by this method are above everyone else. Cosmologists calculate 72 to 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. We have set very high hopes with JDUST that it can tell us about the exact and accurate values of the Hubble constant. The answer can be very encouraging because JDUST can particularly assist with measuring the expansion of light from bright stars such as red giants and cepheid stars. 
The reason is that it will be able to look through the long distances of pesky space dust that hugely disturb the measurements of local astronomers. In fact, we should salute the people who have given us information with the help of the Hubble telescope because it had too low infrared capabilities that we had deteriorate the quality of the image in case of an increase in infrared power. JWST is magical in this way that it can maintain high quality imaging while piercing through dust clouds with phenomenon infrared power. Dark matter is like a hoax in science to this date. Astrophysicists don't even know if dark matter exists or not. We only know that dark matter is necessary to form the logic in the happening of some events, such as galaxy rotation curves of spiral galaxies. When scientists first studied spiral galaxies, they noticed that the patterns of velocity in those galaxies were not the same as expected. All were thinking that the velocity graph in a spiral galaxy would be Keplerian, which means the velocity would constantly decrease with the increase in radius. It was not the case. The velocity was rather constant on the increasing side with the increase in the radius. This strange behavior is only possible if there is some non-luminous. This missing matter has been named as dark matter. This dark matter has another extraordinary effect. It can deform and stretch the images of faraway galaxies and quasars or stars. This behavior is known as gravitational lensing, and it has been predicted in general relativity. The presence of a gravitational field made by a cluster of galaxies can distort and magnify the light from faraway galaxies that are behind it in the exact same line of sight. This effect is known as the gravitational lens, and it is similar to looking with a telescope. In fact, this phenomenon had been in use to see the earlier galaxies when powerful telescopes were not in the use. Now with the unbelievable resolution power of JWST, can we look for distant gravitational lenses which were not seen till now? And after that, with the help of those gravitational lenses, can we look outside the universe or into the portal of another universe? It is all just the beginning of the mission. The other curious thing everyone wants to know that whether or not we are alone in the whole universe, NASA has listed some of the most favorable planets that can host life. Let's dive deep into these celestial bodies that NASA chose to investigate with JWST. These are KPLER 186F, 490 light years away, first discovered in 2014 and 10% larger than Earth. KPPLE are 283 C less than 1700 light years away, supposed to support life similar to Earth. GLIEC 667 CEF and 667 E, present within the habitable zone and 22.1 light years away, 4.7 times larger than the Earth. These two planets are the strongest candidates to support life as they have the most suitable atmosphere with three stars orbiting each other. JWST has ignited the hope of seeing some groundbreaking and unique space discoveries soon. Let's hope we will be able to make the efficient technology that might be able to compact the distance of millions of years to support our wanderlust of stardust.